Well, hello everyone. It is a Friday, the 9th of February, 2024. I am Dale Delbridge, Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and this is your status chat. Now today we're going to have to run through it pretty quick because I've been fighting with equipment all day and computers. Got a piece of equipment working, talking through the serial connection, then it decided it didn't want to, then we had to revise the computer and delete a bunch of stuff and recompress everything, and I'm about technologically worn out because after we get finished here and post it, we got to go back to work and that'll be late in the evening. So today being the ninth, what news do we have? We'll get to it right now. If you like this content, please go to calldelltosell.com, find the tab that says on YouTube, click it, and it'll open up a page of QR codes. There you can use a smartphone to scan and get to the YouTube page, or you can just mouse over and click it on a PC. There you'll be able to subscribe to this little button over here and click the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you when each Friday's blog has been uploaded. Thank you. And now the camera wants to blur out on me. Gives me that little filtered snap type look. Anyway, let's start out with the bad news first. Let's hit that center panel. All right, what we have here is from Fox 17 News in Nashville by Sydney Keller Friday, February the 8th, which would be Thursday yesterday. Wilson County Supply Chain Company permanently closing, lays off more than 50 employees. And the thing we're going to look right here at is Wilson County, Tennessee, Middle Tennessee companies laying off dozens of employees effective April. So the good news is it's not immediate, but the bad news is it's 50 some odd people that are going to lose their job. And that is very significant to those 52 families that are, that are attached to that. In the grand scheme of layoffs in national labor, 52 people is not a whole heck of a lot in a state with uh, what 6.5 million or so we have people and a great nation of 300 some odd million to go with it so it's 52 people significant very significant to them not a big switch in the strategy of what's getting done except for we're going to find something down here APL Logistics I'm going to highlight it. APL Logistics a global supply chain company based in Singapore that focuses on automotive, consumer, industrial, and retail markets. And the significance there, I think, is we do have a lot of automotive uh, jobs in this area, and we are watching them. We're seeing some things that's past status chat conversations, but we also notice it's Singapore, and we know that China in particular is in recession. Asia is, is weak, and we know that Germany's economy is also weak. We're doing fairly strong if we can believe what we're told. Now, I've got something else for you. Let's get back to that screen. All right. This is from Reuters. The day before that, which would be Wednesday, I suppose, being 7 at uh, 2.20 p.m. Central Time, Lindsay Dunsmuir and Michael S. Derby. Reuters, here we go, and it says Fed policymakers signal no rush to cut U.S. interest rates. I'm going to bring this up. I have something already highlighted down here. We have it right there. Thank you for the bell. Sitting today, I would say two to three cuts would seem to be appropriate for me right now. That's my gut based upon the data we have so far, said Minneapolis Fed President Neil Cash Curry said in an interview with the broadcaster on CNBC. Now, remember the hype right after December, we heard it. So many people on the Facebook, that's why you don't get your news from the Facebook. So many people telling you everything's great. Laissez le bon temps rouler. We're going to get seven cuts, maybe as early as January. And that was a modification, I think, of rumors and enthusiasm from five, starting maybe March, from the three or more from the December meeting that the committee had where they said starting in Q3, which would be the second half of the year. So that's what that says. Now, we do have some good news back over here again. This is going to be from CNBC Business. Here we go. This is from Elizabeth Buchwald. Three-minute read, 9.51 a.m. today. Good news for the Fed. Revised inflation data confirms last year's progress. Now, let's get really excited about that. I'm not going to hit this too long. All of these links will be in the description of the status chat over on the YouTube page where you find these status chats located. And I have only one thing I want to point here because... 
Don't people get in it? Don't people get irritated and confused when it seems like the Fed doesn't know exactly what it's doing and the numbers seem to get changed and whatnot? Well, that's what this this particular Fed governor said. He said, we have to make decisions in real time. Fed Governor Christopher Waller said late last year, whatever the data is released, that's the data I have to use. The problem is data gets revised. What did we just see? Now, normally when they revise things, they revise them to the bad. They'll start with a number to kind of break the ice and get everybody used to it and makes things look like they're rosier maybe than what they really are, then they will raise that indicator, if it's a negative indicator, and make it worse, and hopefully nobody really notices that. Now, in this case, they started out with a worse number and revised it. But let's go over and see if we can see how much it was revised down, because it was a game changer if we can find it. Here we are. The new adjustments indicate price increase by only two tenths of a percent in December from the prior month compared to an initial estimate of three tenths of a percent. Yeah, that's what it says. So we're going to do one last thing because, again, we got to be quick because we got so much we got to finish up. Not my problem, not your problem, my problem. But let's look at the news, mortgage news, dailies rate index. We're going to look at the 30-year fix, which is right here. It says the current is 6.98. Really hasn't moved a lot over the last couple of days. It went down and back up. And we see that the low was 6.16 this year, 52-week. That does move because each week it moves forward by one week. And 8.03 is a high over that 52-week range. Now, if we want to look at it in graphical form, which I like, we see that we were way back here from 1980. We were at what? 17 and a half percent, a little over 17 and a half percent. Then we get down to, let's say, 2004 and five when all the problems began. We were down here bottom around six percentage points. And if we go, see if we can find uh, 2008, somewhere in 2008, we were around six percent, which is about where we are today. And if we trail right across, that's precisely where we are. And there you can see 30-year jumbos are at 7.28, 30-year fix, 6.92. This, let's see if I can get that's the latest data. Say, yep, 5.1 arm is 6.48, 15-year fix, 6.26, 6 6.19, 30-year FHA. And I don't know why we can't get that quite that higher data that it says. At, or low here, 6.68, 6.98. But you get the message. Rates really aren't that far out of whack from where they have been in the past. The thing we get to is that we are a payment-driven society. People buy just as much as the bank or mortgage group will let them have. And when the rates went down, people got caught. They've paid the they, they time to pay the piper. They've already danced the dance. So if you bought something and got the benefit of that low interest rate way on early, now that it's gone back kind of to normal, you're going to have a little bit of a payment there you might have if you have to sell that house anytime soon. If you don't, hold on, and we'll still get there with the cost of inflation, other things. Interest coming down will help the sales, but it's not going to really affect the value in the short run. As we look at the Fed saying we only have maybe two rate cuts. Now imagine what that's going to do to the economy. It's going to level it out a little bit. So let's get to the end of this show. Hello, I'm Del Delbert of Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. If you are currently unrepresented and would like to know how to compare up to three properties side by side and room by room, then go over to my new YouTube channel, Call Dell to Sell. That's one L and Dell, no spaces. Watch the demo on Real Scout and then call me and we'll set up your exclusive ad-free account today. Last week, 2, 2 of 24, we had in the opportunity 17,899 that dropped over the previous period. We had 3342 in the under contracts still showing and the integer ratio went up just a little bit as did the under contracts still showing. Now what do we have this week? Two nine of 24. We have 18,194 in the opportunities that went up just a little bit. We had 3570 in the under contracts still showing that also went up just a little bit and the integer ratio between them went to 20 percent. So there we have it. So as you can see 
you're not the only one that's frustrated with the revision in the data. It's hard to make a decision when they keep changing it after you've made your decision. So we have that going on. The Fed even has it. So we're just doing what we can to hit what's pitched. Now, you know what you got to do. You got to call Dell to sell. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you next week.